Imagine if this is how I smile. Yes, imagine. That'd be scary. <laughs> You'd be like, please don't smile. Welcome everyone to our awesome announcements. I'm Mr. Matt. And I'm Miss Gianna. Do you guys remember our offering project for this season? Do you remember? I do. <laughs> well, we are helping send shoe boxes to kids all over the world. So we want you to give in your offering right now if you brought it. And we also have a cool video for you to watch with more info on our offering project because we're gonna be doing a little bit more than just bringing money for this offering project. So let's go check it out and then we'll see you guys next week. Every shoebox gift starts its journey with individual love and each item packed an expression of that love. From there, it finds its way to a drop-off location with thousands of these centers located all over the world. Trucks then transfer the shoebox gift to processing centers where they will be inspected and prayed for by volunteers. Then they're loaded onto containers heading overseas covering thousands of miles. At port, the shoebox gifts resume the journey on ground. Some by road and some by trail, concluding their journey at a local church. Each shoebox gift is given to a child in need. Love has traveled many miles to bless that one child. Each shoebox gift is an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus with a child. The child is then invited to attend a follow-up discipleship program where they will grow in their faith. After graduating from the Greatest Journey Discipleship Program, children will be equipped to share the truth and love of the gospel to family and friends, multiplying the body of Christ all over the world. Why are you hiding under the table? They're after, they're after me, man. What? Who, who's after you? I don't see anyone. What are you talking about? Okay. Just, what's going so, on? My brother and his friends, they planned a nerf battle against my sister and their friends, and I heard about this battle, so I warned my sister and her friends about the battle, and then I had to go, and I had to tell them about it, and then my brother and his friends are now mad at me, and they're trying to get back at me, and I don't know what to do. I need somewhere to hide right now, Leanne. Oh my goodness, okay, so let me get this straight. You knew about this nerf battle going on, and you tipped off your sister, and now your brother is mad at you, and he and his buddies are chasing after you. That's why you're trying to hide. Yes. Oh my goodness, Josh, this is crazy, but I have the perfect solution for you. <laughs> Perfect solution, right here. What is that? This is my God can. <laughs> What's it do? Well, it's my God can. It doesn't necessarily do anything, but, but it helps me whenever I am facing a really big problem, okay? How about you take a look inside? There's something inside. Okay, you gotta catch your breath too, all that running. Okay, what's, what's in there? Let's show everyone. <gasps> yes! This is, this is not a Nerf gun, Leanne. How is this going to help me? Oh, it is. It's a clear glass. Can you hold it up for the kids to see? Yeah. Okay. Well, I know it's not exactly what you were hoping for. Weren't you hoping for like some probably kind of Nerf weapon kind of gun thing? Yes, I need the Nerf Rhino Blaster and it has the motors and it has the double barrels and it has the tripod and it has the scope and it would be so much easier to get through this. The, the, oh no, but now you just got that. Oh no, but keep, you gotta keep that out. I know it is actually gonna be a good solution, but you're just gonna have to wait to hear. In our story today, we're gonna hear about a guy named Elisha. And he had a similar problem as you. He was getting chased by some bad guys. Now, maybe not with Nerf guns. It was a little bit more serious than that. But I think you're really gonna like to hear what God did next. The Syrians were enemies of Israel and were determined to destroy God's people. But God knew the secret plans of the enemy and gave the prophet Elijah the miraculous ability to hear every part of their wicked plan. Every time the Syrians made a move, the Israelites were able to avoid the king's traps. The king's frustration grew every time the Israelites escaped. He questioned even his own trusted servants, demanding, Which one of you is a spy? None of us, replied one of the servants. It is Elisha, that prophet in Israel. He tells the king of Israel everything, even the exact words that you speak in your bedroom. The king was furious. Go find out where he is so that I can capture him. When the king of Syria found out where Elisha was staying, 
he sent a large number of armed men, chariots, and horses after him. In the middle of the night, the soldiers surrounded the city. When Elisha's servant stumbled out of his tent early the next morning, he couldn't believe his eyes. I must be dreaming, he anxiously thought to himself. Everywhere he looked, there were enemy soldiers and horses. They were completely surrounded. His heart sank in fear. Elisha, he cried, running back inside. The enemy is upon us. What are we going to do? Elisha could see the fear written on his servant's face. Don't worry, Elisha said calmly. There are more mighty warriors fighting with us than all of those against us. The servant saw nothing but the enemy. So Elisha prayed to God, please open my servant's eyes so that he can see. The Lord opened the eyes of the young man and all at once he saw a heavenly army of horses and chariots of fire. They were not alone after all. The armies of God were there to protect them, but the Syrians could not see that God was fighting against them and charged towards the prophet and his men. Elisha continued to pray, Please, Lord, blind the enemies so that they cannot see where they are going. So God blinded the Syrians as Elisha had asked, and they stumbled around in darkness and confusion. Elisha said to them, Let me lead you to the man you are looking for. Then he led them to Samaria and right to the king of Israel, where they became his prisoners. At the advice of Elisha, the king of Israel showed them mercy and prepared a feast for them where they ate and drank. Then he let them go free. After this, the Syrians gave up their attacks on Israel. That was an amazing story, Leanne, but how is this gonna help me? Okay, you're still not sure about that clear glass. Well, let me tell you, I'm gonna show you. Okay, we're gonna pretend that this tissue right here is our lives, okay? And this bucket of blue water right here are all the problems that we're facing. And when we try to do it on our own without God, oh my goodness, uh, things don't go so well. Of course, it doesn't work out at all, does it? Now, what happens though if we have God on our side? Thank you, I'll take the clear glass. I love this clear glass because it reminds me of that invisible army that was all surrounding Elisha. And Elisha wasn't afraid because he knew that God was going to protect him. He oh. didn't have to be uh, afraid or anything. You scared me for a second there. <laughs> oh. He didn't have to be afraid because he knew God would provide that protection. And let's see what happens to us when we trust God to provide us with protection. <gasps> Look at that, the tissue didn't even get wet. What do you think of that, Josh? <laughs> I think that's really cool. I think it's cool that God provides protection. Can you guys all at home say that? God, God provides, provides protection. protection. All right, you know what, Leanne? That actually reminds me of our memory verse that we've been learning this month. I think, I think you guys all at home should stand up and mm -hmm. we're gonna do that memory verse right now. So get up, yeah. get up on your feet, get out of your couch, get out of your gaming chair, whatever it is, and we're gonna do this <laughs> memory verse. Ready? Ready? All right. And, and my God, God will meet all your needs, needs according, according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Philippians 4:19. Hey, I think we should do that once more. One more time. All right. And, and my God, God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4:19. You know, Leanne, I don't think I'd want to pray that my brother would be struck blind like the Arameans. No. That, that would not be fun. But I think it would be fun if we had a Nerf war because that, that is just something that has been on my mind lately. Yes. But That's now that I think about it, why is it called your God can? Oh yes, well, who can provide us with protection no matter what we're facing? My God can! Yes, my God can, oh, get it? Oh <laughs> yes. Funny. It's like a play on Leanne, they're right there! Oh no! It's I need brother. to go! You better run! Okay, oh my goodness, I hope he's okay. And friends, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.
Here we go. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power. Yeah.